I'm John Rising, co-founder and CEO of StackUp, which is a uh, service that lets people use ERC-4337 infrastructure. ERC-4337 has four major components. Uh, the first is the user operation, which is a pseudo transaction object that contains the intent of what a user wants to do and a bunch of other information such as you know, how much they're willing to pay for it, you know, things like gas values. That user operation is usually created by an app or by a wallet, and then it is sent to a, uh, to a bundler, which is a special class of actors that submits these user operations to a public uh, transaction pool and then submit them uh, to the entry point. Uh, the entry point is a smart contract that's on chain that handles the verification and execution of these user operations by uh, smart contract accounts or smart accounts. Uh, smart accounts are basically the wallet or the accounts that's actually owned by users that can that can contain any logic you want for what a user you know can and can't approve, and also uh, can be supplemented by a couple other special objects created by ERC four three seven such as a paymaster, which is a type of smart contract uh, account that can pay for gas on behalf of half of users, as well as aggregators, which are smart contracts that can save gas fees for users by verifying the signatures of multiple accounts all at once. User operations are a pseudo transaction object which means they are not themselves a transaction, but contain all of the data to execute the transactions on chain for a user. Uh, so it includes things such as the sender, which is the smart account that actually is going to execute the operations. It contains a nonce, uh, which is used for anti-replay protection. Basically, it's a number that increases, although in ERC-4337, you can actually have uh, additional data contained in the nonce. Uh, it also includes information about how much gas you are willing to spend for the verification phase versus the execution phase of executing the operation. And we can get into that a little bit later. Um, basically, the entry point has two distinct phases. Uh, and it also contains information about whether a paymaster is used to uh, pay for transaction fees on behalf of the smart account. A bundler is a is kind of like a block builder. What it is is it's a special kind of actor that uh, accepts user operations and then propagates them to a public peer to peer transaction pool. And it also watches this transaction pool so that users uh, uh, can ensure that their transactions will not be censored and that they'll get through to the uh, blockchain itself. So a bundler will uh, look at these, will monitor this transaction pool, will simulate these transactions to ensure that they will actually uh, pass verification, which means that the bundler will get paid for submitting it in the first place. And then these bundlers uh, take a big group of these operations, put them into a single object we call predictably a bundle, um, which is just a struct of user operations and then submits that to the entry point contract on chain. The canonical mempool is a, a censorship resistant uh, mempool that is the default for ERC-4337 transactions. Uh, all bundlers more or less agree to participate in this mempool, which is where the majority of user operations will take place. In order to ensure that this mempool is resistant to denial of service attacks. The uh, bundlers need to simulate these transactions and uh, not propagate transactions that are known to break a certain set of rules uh, that are computationally not very expensive so that the transaction pool cannot be effectively censored for uh, a low cost by you know some uh, bad actor. 
So the entry point is actually a big part of the innovation of ERC-4337. What it is, is it is a singleton smart contract, which means everyone uses the same one and it's immutable. Uh, and that the, the smart account trusts to handle the verification and execution of operations on chain. So the entry point you can think of as kind of acting like the consensus layer in the primary blockchain or on the main chain itself. Uh, uh, but this contract instead will first verify that all the user operations uh, will go through and then it executes the call data within these operations. And the separation between verification and execution ensures that, uh, for example, bundlers will get paid for submitting the operations on chain, even if the call data, for whatever reason, uh, fails. So a user can actually have their uh, uh, what they intended to do fail or avert on chain, but the uh, user operation itself will have been initiated and the bundler itself will have been paid for submitting the user operation on chain. The entry point first will receive a bundle, and if it contains uh, aggregated transactions, that is user operations that specify an aggregator to verify its signatures, it will first check with each individual aggregators that is used whether the uh, user operations are valid or not. Uh, uh, then it will go through and check each of the individual user operations one at a time and verify that each one in the bundle uh, will accept the user operation itself. This is part of the reason why a bundler does simulation is to ensure that uh, the entry point uh, accepts all of the user operations in the bundle it submits. Once the verification, once that verification of the signature has happened, well, if a paymaster is used, the entry point will verify that the paymaster has enough uh, ETH or native token in order to pay the transit to pay the gas, uh, and it will also check, or alternatively, it will check that the sender itself has uh, enough native token or ETH to pay for the user operation. Once that is complete. Uh, that's the end of the verification loop. And then it moves to the execution loop. The execution loop uh, is where the entry point send, uh, basically where the smart account executes the call data that is included in the user operation struct. The call data is effectively just the data that says uh, what the transaction or transactions uh, that are going to happen on chain are. A contract account is a smart contract that is owned by a user. A contract account, uh, or also called more commonly a smart account, is uh, can set its own verification logic. So uh, you can either have the contract be owned by multiple keys, a single key, um, uh, or it can specify custom logic. You can even use custom cryptographic curves or even uh, uh, check with external contracts such as aggregators uh, in order to verify the signature for that account. So when a user sends the first user operation, the user operation will include something called an init code. Basically, it's the code to initialize the account. Uh, so it will include the code that deploys the account and the entry point will uh, first check if that contract, uh, uh, rather, will check if the sender of the user operation exists yet. And if it does not, it will then execute the init code. So uh, a user does not necessarily need to have a smart contract account before doing any operation on chain. They can just do it. And a 
uh, in an application can just include the code to create the account in the first operation. Uh, so a separate transaction is not needed to deploy the account for a user. Additionally, the uh, additionally the addresses for ERC-437 contract accounts are counterfactual. That means if you know what the init code is going to be, you can know what the address of the contract is going to be so that you can actually uh, send funds or NFTs or interact, you know, do things on behalf of the account before actually needing to deploy the account on the first transaction. So a paymaster is an ERC-437 account that can pay for gas fees on behalf of other ERC-437 accounts. Uh, the most common use case is for a paymaster to sponsor the gas for an individual user's smart account. There are two primary types of paymasters. Uh, one of them is, and probably the most common, is called a verifying paymaster, which is where the logic for whether a paymaster will sponsor a transaction exists off chain. And uh, the key that owns that paymaster contract will sign each individual user operation. And then each individual user operation that has that signature will then have its gas fully paid for by that verifying paymaster. So you can think of us of a verifying paymaster as a type of off-chain paymaster. Aggregators are a type of smart contract that is created by ERC-4327 that allows uh, multiple user operations to have their signatures checked by a single entity. What this allows is uh, gas savings. This is especially powerful for layer twos, where if a bunch of user operations all uh, use the same type of signature, such as a BLS signature, the all those signatures can be uh, put together into a single smaller signature rather than one really large signature. The reason why that's especially advantageous for layer twos is that the majority of the cost of using a layer two is posting the data uh, down to layer one, such as the signature data. So by making that signature data from something that's very large to something that is the length of a single signature, uh, that can be verified by one of these aggregators on behalf of all of these different accounts, you can significantly reduce the gas cost. In fact, in some instances, you can actually have the gas fee for an ERC-20 transfer to be lower than a regular transfer on a layer two blockchain using ERC-437 versus using uh, uh, versus not using ERC-437, such as doing an ERC-20 transfer with an EOA. So when a user goes to uh, do an action on chain, a user operation is created. That user then signs that user operation and it gets sent to a bundler. Uh, the bundler will then uh, package that user operation and all other relevant user operations into a bundle that then gets submitted on chain to the entry point contract. The entry point contract uh, then handles the verification and execution of these user operations in collaboration with the smart accounts themselves. Additionally, paymasters and aggregators can be used to improve the overall user experience. Paymasters, of course, can sponsor gas fees for the smart account, and aggregators can uh, reduce gas costs for certain types of cryptographic signatures. My favorite resource, although I am very biased, is the Stackup documentation at docs.stackup.sh. Uh, there you can find some, you know, information about overviews of 437, as well as links to other resources. Uh, additionally, there are some great resources uh, by the 4337 Mafia team, which you can just Google online and find some of the resources that they've put together there. Uh, there are also some great articles, which you can also find at docs.stackup.sh, um, in particular by the, uh, by the Alchemy team, by the Nethermind team, and by the Ethereum Foundation explaining ERC-4337 in 
much more technical detail than we went over here.